Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Advanced Kayak Angler. I appreciate you being on. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate all the, the comments and everything else. You know, hopefully people are enjoying the show and uh, and the people have said something I, I really appreciate. Um, if you would, tell everybody else about it. You know, we're growing every week, but um, yeah, it, it doesn't hurt to spread the good word. Uh, this weekend, my somehow my 2023 crazy roll kept going. I've got a couple new trophies back there. I won the um, American, uh, the AKAT, which is the high roller event that's going on all across the state of Alabama. And I got third in the big super regional for Iron City Kayak Anglers, North Alabama Kayak Anglers, and Coleman Kayak Anglers. So it was those three clubs coming together. I think it had 75 people, got third with four fish. And then because it was under a Coleman rules, it was four fish. And then with AKAT, it was four five fish and i think there was 29 so yeah my single biggest payday um i mean i won a lot more for the kfl last year but and i you know made other money before which is great but this is definitely my biggest single day win and that was awesome um for sure definitely allow me to buy some more crap so i'm about to make my tackle warehouse order right now so all my money is about to start going outdoor but what i'm really saving up for honestly is a moon lander it's a radica moon lander it's like a camper cap kind of deal and they have like a fan and vents and all this awesome stuff really want one at, and they start at like 5500 so that's what i'm saving up for uh just great way to camp and hang out and you know yeah fun way to save some money go on trips and have a great place to stay too so yeah there we go all right, so uh, this week we have, or I have, a kayak, uh, California angler by the name of Dominic Doan. I'll go ahead and bring him on. Uh, yeah, man, Z-Pro teammate. We're both nice. powered by Z-Pro, so we got that in common. But besides kayak fishing, yeah, just great guy. And thank you for being on, man. <clears throat> Not a problem. Cool. Glad to be on. My pleasure. Yeah, so if people don't know, tell everybody who Double Digit Angler is. So double digit angler, first of all, I'm not a double digit angler guy. <clears throat> I'm just a double digit chaser. I should have just changed it to double digit chaser. Actually, I just saw uh, Rolando Nandine. He's on the uh, mm -hmm. C-Pro team too. He just posted a 10 pounder he caught. No way. Yeah, for real. Here, I can really. I, I bet you I can bring it up. Yeah, he's on. Um... Because he's been on the struggle to break 10. So that's his uh, new PB8. P P I, then. he must have broken which i don't why would he be on i'm not saying it's it's easy but he um he lives He's in texas, texas. Right? yeah I yeah we texas. we talked I about it texas over the podcast one, one time and i got yeah that was a great podcast by the way but uh here Thanks, man um i caught one that was almost <laughs> in a couple of days i was there oh really yeah i mean like it was close to nine to, or to nine. me it's just like the land of giants it was a 24 but it was it was Dang. probably pretty close here. I'll, I'll bring it up right here. There's that caliber of fish that everybody's hunting. It's like 23 inches and above. That's the most uncommon fish there is, is the 23 inches and above. There it is. <coughs> Tan, huh? Yeah. We need there to get him on the story. and, and uh, there it is. It's almost oh, off the dude. board. That's yeah. massive. Yeah. That's like 26. Yeah, it's a mega. Yeah. yeah, last year I caught a 2575, and mm. it looked like that. But that one looked like it has a bigger build to it. Oh, yeah. See, How mine has the same head. Mine was 9 pounds, 4 ounces, I think. Or oh, really? Pounds. Wow. And that big? <clears throat> it, was a, it was about 26 inches. It was almost there. Wow. That's why I upgraded to a 32 inch, because I was like, um, if I caught a twenty-five seven five, it was just a quarter of an inch more, and I would have been over the twenty-six mark. So, I I caught a ten-five whenever I was a little kid, and that's I've never, you know, uh, never caught. What's the it. longest fish you've caught? Probably tw that twenty-four. I mean, I've caught a bunch of you know a bunch of twenty-threes, but that twenty-four is the first time measuring as a kayak angler. I've broken. Tw I hit twenty-four. <laughs> 23 is still like oh yeah it's still massive it's not common to hook a 23 like every 
every five trip. I'd say like I only hooked into maybe two or three bass over 23 inches last year. Yeah. I I will say I saw one, I guess it was year before last on Gunnersville. It was the biggest fish I've ever seen in person. It um it just absolutely flushed, like got underneath my frog mm-hmm. and it just or a toad and it was um yeah, it just absolutely toilet bowled it. It was so big, it was like a whirlpool. Yeah. But you know that sound whenever you hear a giant and mm-hmm. I set the hook on it and just nothing. It took it down mm-hmm. too. Like I weighed mm-hmm. a second, but I mean it was it was obvious that was like 10 <clears throat> easily. T- I mean, by saying 10 is taking it light is underestimating it. Cause it, it was a, a big, like once in oh, a yeah. lifetime fish. Yeah. I'm sure of it. I mean, you're not one to lie about a 10 pounder, 12 oh, pounder, no. you know? No, no. I've, <clears throat> I wish I would have caught it, you know, cause uh, there was other people in the area too, but man, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I didn't mean yeah. to slow you down, but it's all good. Yeah. Do you, you know how it is when, um, like, you see all those tactical bass in videos when they spit it out so fast? Yeah. Like, they can have it in the mouth and spit it out within, like, a split of a second. So, I don't I don't blame you at all. We all lose them. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, fish, um, fishing a frog, you just, you're not going to catch them all, you know? No, it's but them. it's fun. You know, it's yeah, really fun. Right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, started off making YouTube videos a long time ago from, uh, from the bank and from a belly boat. At first, my first YouTube name was Bad Bass TV. Ooh, all right. <clears throat> and that was in 2007, 2008 when I used to live in Santa Rosa and Fish Spring Lake, Clear Lake, Sonoma. Um, then fast forward, you know, after college and partying and, and kind of like giving up on fishing temporarily, you know, just letting love go for a moment and then getting it back during COVID. I picked up a Old Town 106 PDL as my first kayak. And I was like, Good guy. Yeah, yeah, it's a great. Mm-hmm. It maneuvers yeah. really well. Um, it's small. It it does it all. You can car top it, no problem without yeah, the pedal drive. Yeah, you car top, right? <clears throat> no more. No more. Oh, okay. I went through car topping for a full year and I was so over it after that. <laughs> yeah. So over it. And, I it. and the thing is with these tournaments down SoCal, it's a shotgun launch. It's literally they don't open the gates. They're not open all night long, all day long. They open it at exact time, and then the way they schedule these tournaments is the launch is about 45 minutes or half an hour after they open the gates. So literally, by the, I have to get there first thing in the morning, and if I'm like back by 20 cars, then it's kind of like, man, everybody's going to launch before me, but I'm literally driving down the launch ramp, uncar topping my my kayak rigging up live scope rigging up my graph you know how it is yeah oh yeah and uh i just got sick and tired of it but you know what the good thing about it is that those wins felt a lot better after going through all that that journey felt probably 10 times better than you know just pulling up with the with the trailer and then all loaded up all in luxury, you know, um, like it felt that much better winning because I didn't come from, I didn't come from an expensive kayak. I didn't come from a trailer or, or, um, <clears throat> like 10 or 12 inch graphs, you know, everything was just bare minimum. Yeah. I did it the ugly way, <laughs> <clears throat> but, um, fast forward after 2007, 2008, I told you you got the 106 PDL in 2021, 2022, and then um, <clears throat> did a few small tournaments. Decided to open up my uh, YouTube channel called Double Digit Angler just because it was catchy. It was a catchy name. Yeah, oh yeah. Don't got yeah. a double digit on my record, but uh, I plan on trying to break that this year. 
You'll get there, man. Oh, eventually if I stop by Texas <laughs> or Florida. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, ever since hopping on a kayak, I have a couple Pro Series wins. Um, traveled to the National Championship for KBF twice already. My first one was over at Cattle Lake. The second one was over at Kentucky Lake. And um, I'm sorry. Huh? Kentucky's. Yeah. Kentucky <clears throat> apologizes. Oh, yeah. It's trash. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, man. Unless you're Russ Snyder and, you know, you fish all those smaller creeks and rivers and et cetera. But, yeah, uh, yeah that's just a little bit about me. So what – I. I know you're, <clears throat> we're going to talk about this. You're changing kayaks, but uh, you've been in a bona fide SS one twenty seven, right? Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm currently fishing out of it right now. Yeah. Um. You know, there's pros and cons to it. Oh yeah. Um, I had one myself. It great boat. You know? <clears throat> it's a great boat. It does the job. It's just uh, there's some things. Well, I'll, I'll name the pro. The pro is that it's very maneuverable. Like it. it when you when you turn that motor guide on and you tell it to go left, it'll go left. And when you tell it to go right, it'll go right. Um, you could steer it really well. It's a great boat for live scope. Um, it, it was the most riggable <laughs> boat I've ever owned. Like it was, yeah. You know, unlike the Hobie, it didn't have the through holes already in. I'd say that's the only thing about the Hobie I like <laughs> as far as uh -huh. riggability. But all the track, the like the. The drive oh, the built-in, yeah, the built-in oh, yeah. tracks, I mean, awesome. The, yeah, the 127 is, I mean, it's just like the it's most boat. riggable boat I've ever owned. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like easily riggable, I guess is yeah. the right way to say it. Like you don't need to buy extra track. You don't yeah. need to. You don't need to do much. You can put a motor on top of it and it's good to go. You know, that's right. <clears throat> the only downside, not the only downside, but one of the one of the few cons is. The dry pod. I don't really like having um, something bulging in the middle, yeah. and uh, it's a little too narrow for me. And as you know, I live scope. I use my electronics. So rigging this boat, it has a max, um, and you don't have a lot of room to put massive graphs. And and I see people put like two or three. 10 inch graphs on a bona fide, but I'm just like, yeah. it's not on the safer side of things. Like, like bass thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> bass thumbs. Yeah. He actually went down to, he went minimal. He only has one graph now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, 194 SV UHD2 Garmin graph. He used to have two, but. Two with a low amp. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just hey. overkill on a bona fide. Yeah. It is nice being, I, I will say, I do miss having everything all in one on that dry pod where, like, oh, I it's mean, just like, boom, yeah, except your, cable. yeah, except for your live scope. You've got, you take it out, boom, the whole yeah. thing, nobody's going to steal it. Like, that, that is nice. Yeah. yeah. That, that part of it's nice. It sits too low in the front, I believe, for bow mounts. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, but it's kind of on the slow side. Yeah, there, there's not many kayaks <coughs> that whenever you put a bow mount motor, I mean, there's a couple, and we'll talk about one of them here in a second. Yeah. But yeah, like it, like that's you know, I'm heavy, I'm 250, so like I never, to me, I've always been worried about putting a bow mount on because if I got mm -hmm. really rough water, even if I try put yeah. a lot of weight to the back being a heavier guy like it it just seems like that would put me in a bad situation you know oh, like no. i see, yeah, I see some people course. put yeah like my buddy chuck has a bow mount on a you know a hobie pa12 and it's like i wouldn't even put one on my 14 i can't imagine putting one on my 12 <laughs> you know but it, it does take some experience to maneuver around with the mortar guide and i gotta say if like i don't recommend putting a bow mount on unless you have experience with waves and like river systems and etc because one of the few one of the few times my first time in the kayak i almost flipped the kayak because i you know i wasn't experienced enough 
um, because once you hit that anchor button and if it's facing downwind and you're not paying attention, it'll swing abruptly mm. upwinds and uh, that'll tip the ca- kayak over easily. So, you know, there was times that I had to jump out of my kayak in 20, 30 mile per hour gusts. And I was just like, well, I got to do it because I have an A7 III. I have a $2,000 camera and lens inside yeah. the boat. I have all my rods, my reels, my GoPro. Like I have too much on the line. So I jumped out and it happened twice in one day. So, wow. <clears throat> I mean, you better believe yeah. if I can dive in the water to save all my gear rather than turtle, yeah. bro, I'm going swimming out. I don't care how cold it is. I carry yeah. a splash bag. I'm going in the water. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I recommend for everybody to, especially during the winter time is bring a splash bag, extra pairs, clothes and et cetera. Yeah. Always wear your PFD and, and, in all sorts of weather, but especially during like 30 mile per hour gusts um, and pay attention. You know, that's like my biggest tip for, for people that are just hopping onto a kayak is pay attention. Like just don't, don't take everything for granted that, you know, <clears throat> a motor was, is going to put you on spot lock the right way that you want it to put you, you know, yeah. it takes some experience now that I've gotten used to it totally recommend a bow mount for people that know how to handle waves and and um dicey weather but again it's kind of like one of those things is gotta have all that experience um like jeff little for instance i would recommend jeff little a bow mount because he he has all that knowledge of moving waters and white waters and etc and how to handle a wave um <clears throat> and or or someone that owned a boat before a bass boat or something because they know how to like spear waves and 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 go against the waves and stuff but but yeah one one thing i recommend is if you do if anybody does decide to purchase a bow mount is have if it's dicey weather have a paddle on your lap and then just have that bow mount facing straight forward towards the wind or the waves and using that that paddle to kind of steer whatever direction you go don't put it on heading lock just just have it sit straight forward and then steer with your paddle if it gets dicey did you have a rudder <laughs> on the back too no i have those um those fins on the back the, yeah the i know what you're talking about yeah so what, what which graph are you running with <clears throat> uh right now i'm running the 106 sv yeah yeah 10 inch i wish i had the 10 I have a nine you have the UHD model, right? Or is it the Plus? The SV, whatever it is. Yeah, is it the Plus or the UHD? I don't know. <laughs> well, is it what transducer are you running? 54. <clears throat> and it could be either one. Yeah. You know, the UHD I'm, I'm, has a little bit better resolution, I think. It must be the I I think it's the <clears throat> UHD. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the uh, uh, the live scope I have hooked up, but I've never I haven't even used it yet. I've been on honestly, oh, really? I, I've been doing. I bought. I've had it a month and a half, maybe two months now. I've had it set up, but I've been doing so good in tournaments. Like I don't mm-hmm. want to. And and all the tournaments for the last month have been back to back every weekend, so I haven't had any time to go practice with it. And I, and honestly, right now I've been doing so well. I don't <laughs> like. I don't want to mess with anything. You know. Maybe maybe have it on. Maybe you could kind of tailor it to your strategy as if if it is one of those tough days where catching a limit is tough. Yeah. Maybe then turn it on. Yeah. But if it's if it's working for you right now to have it off right now, to leave it off. But if you have like let's say if everybody is struggling, you know, the whole field of anglers, if five fish is gonna get you a check, then I would suggest turning it on at least like oh, yeah. mid midday because it, I mean, you just, it's nice knowing that your every cast is in front of a fish. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't recommend it at places like Kentucky Lake. Oh man. That's just trash over there, man. <laughs> and like, I mark so much bluegill crappie mm, yeah. and uh, what is it? Uh, the White carp. bass and, Oh, carp too, huh? Yeah, it's just I can't find a bass with livescope over there. 
Like it's um, it's truly a disadvantage to have live scope over there. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the crappie fishermen are using it though. Crappie fishing over at Kentucky Lake is super popular, huh? Yeah, oh yeah. <clears throat> I know the uh, Wired to Fish guy, Jason Seelock, he's always posting, you know, he lives on Kentucky Lake and he's always posting his crappie pictures. Yeah. I always see bass boats with two two chairs in the front. I was just like, what, mm. oh, what are they doing over there? <laughs> Offshore. It's just brush piles and they're just running from brush pile to brush pile. Yeah. I think. So what uh tell everybody what you're <laughs> going to what what like and how you're I, I know you just got it, but like mm -hmm. what your vision of it is. So I'm going with the Jackson take two. And my true inspiration was John Ferreira on Instagram. He's friends with Derek Brundle, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he was on the Mass <clears throat> Mullers KFL team last year. And I saw it and I was like, dude, so like I need that boat. It's yeah. the way he did it is that I I think it's um marine mat or EVA foam, <clears throat> but he just made into one whole deck and he put a bass boat swivel chair on it. Wow. Um and he took oh. and he took off the tandem seat. So it's a 13 foot by nine kayak that's two inches longer than a pa14 right because the pa14 is 13 foot seven inches and being from bona fide i never had pedal drives in my bona fide i yeah. i don't use it that often i use the trolling motor pretty much the whole time and i've gotten used to it so i was like there's one con about the bona fide that i didn't like is that tripod and the limited deck deck space but now moving to the take two, I have it's it's originally a tandem kayak. So I have right. all that deck space, right? That I'm gonna keep clear. There's no um there's access hatches, but there's no cargo hatches. Yeah. Right. So everything's gonna be kind of like a new canoe. <clears throat> kind of like a new canoe. So or everything's the Jackson you pick, like totally yeah. make it make it your own. Exactly. And uh so what I what I plan to do is I was thinking about it on the way home from fishing today is I John for has this little deck plate that, that he screwed on the gear tracks in front of the motor guide. And he puts two graphs there. But my plan is for me, I like my graph where it's in reach distance without me moving my back. So I like it right next to to my thigh on the right hand side. So I'm gonna keep my 10 inch um, on the gear track on the tri track on my right thigh. So I, can I love just I love that tri track by the way. <clears throat> oh, it's sweet. Oh yeah. There's something about that red too. It just <laughs> yeah. it's just different, you know. Um, which so, which color do you get? <clears throat> Not the confetti, huh? I got the tan and camel. Okay, cool. Right, it's not or one that, of those. I, I know they have like that ugly ass purple rain. Or, <laughs> yeah, John or that, like, has, the, has the rainbows, the Skittles one. Yeah, the the confetti. The they. Yeah, look, it's a cool kayak, but man, they got a couple of bad colors in that lineup. Uh, Jackson, you know, you know the ones I recommend is the blue one. Yeah, the blue one's sick in person. It's it's cool, and and the one that I have is the camel and the tan one. But um, so my plan is to create I was thinking on the way back instead of running dual graphs on that plate that I'm going to put right in front, I think I'm going to put a horizontal rod rack right there. And I'm just going to have three of my go to rods. Once I have practice dialed in, I'm going to have three of my go to rods, have all the rods strapped down right there. And then I'm going to run two black pack pros one 13 by 16 behind my seat and then one 16 by 16 with my batteries in the way back okay and i'm gonna have um hook a brother up chris cabral rig it all out for me so i'm planning to take out the front seat and having all that deck space right there yeah dude and i, of I, 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 I have my mean scope 
And you, you're really not going to have a problem. Sorry, that that's that purple banana. That's just oh my lord. No, I have that color, that tan green one. Yeah, right there. yeah, it looks good, man. Well, I like the blue too. It's <clears throat> just that third one is. Oh, it's. Who, came <laughs> up with that? Who did that? That was Chad Brock. <laughs> oh man, that's that's some uh, poor decision making. Right that's Jameson Reddings. <laughs> Jameson, come on, man, you're better than that. But yeah, the. Uh, like I, I love how that one seat you can have it way back. I mean, it, like you were saying, yeah. having a motor up front being such a big kayak, and yeah. that kayak, I don't know of another kayak that you'll really be able to distribute your weight, move your seat back. I mean, yeah. it's it's the I mean, it really to me, it seems like a perfect, like absolutely <laughs> boss yeah. bow mount setup. I'm, I imagine it's probably going to pretzel. Uh, paddle pretty decently too probably better than the uh and it'll probably be faster than the bona fide because it's it's got a little bit sleeker instead of in the you know the pontoon the tri hole, hole it's yeah, yeah try hole it's longer so you should get more speed that way and it's got a little bit more rocker to it so it, it should paddle and be a little bit faster with the motor honestly like what i did was i compared the whole of a pa14 uh, Jackson Nar, and I looked at the bottom of each one of them, and I'm like, "Well, that take two is pretty dang similar to a PA14 and a mm -hmm. Jackson Nar." So I'm thinking I'll probably get similar fast speeds with a front motor guide, but I might end up having that second option of running a stern motor on there, yeah. and in running, I think they had it at seven miles an hour with a take two. Yeah. Um, in that cargo space i mean i've seen i've seen youtube youtubers campers fill that up with sleeping bags camera yeah. gear etc <clears throat> hmm? chris funk he uh chris funk yeah yeah he lives you know not too far from here he's a big camper mm -hmm. and he's he's yeah. on youtube as well yeah oh yeah i think i he must be the same guy then does he have like a yeah. purple and white yeah, him and his wife do it a bunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I think he's the only one that has take to Jackson content on YouTube. Yeah, he's, I mean, that that guy, anything Jackson, he's got video on it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I almost bought, I almost bought his old Kilroy, the OG Cal, Kilroy he just, uh, he just got rid of because I really wanted, I got a bite instead because I needed like a light, lighter throw and go, mm -hmm. you know. I probably should have bought it, but I got to buy how it. You, how are you digging it? Have you used it yet? No, I haven't even <laughs> used it yet. Like, our around here, the summer is when, I mean, it's no secret. Like, the creeks, the lakes, Alabama gets so much pressure mm -hmm. that in the summer, the lake, it kind of goes from, it's like pre-spawn, spawn. You'll see the lake guys doing really well, and then as it gets to summer, all the creek guys the creek start guys doing do winning well. all the tournaments. Yeah. So, so you're trying to get be be the best at both or like yeah, being I mean, versatile. Yeah. yeah, that's great, man. So <laughs> and that's my wife's kayak too. So <laughs> good for her. She got a nice new kayak. But no, I, <laughs> I had a great um I had a Diablo Amigo, which is I loved that boat, but my wife didn't i think the seat was a little uncomfortable for her and it's oh, a little okay. bit wider of a platform so it's i think the steeper or the wider paddle stroke was a little mm -hmm. bit more difficult for her. not difficult but she, she <clears throat> didn't like it or i would have kept that but uh yeah one with the bite uh what do you think about the new canoe <clears throat> um unlimited I, I had a pursuit at one time and that a pursuit is like paddling a race car like if, really oh dude it's like it's absolute, fast oh man it's like it's lightning man that the pursuit is absolutely it's by far the best paddling kayak i've ever had super easy a rig wow. really not uh, absolutely not the most stable i mean but oh it's you, not it's a no. little is it like bona fide oh no uh, more tippier than a ss really uh, oh yeah for sure I mean, the Unlimited, which I've never been an Unlimited, but that to me is like the bow mount kayak now. But the Pursuit, you could put a, 
you know, I know people peddle them. I know a couple of guys here, Sam and Jacob Mott, they, they both have them. They both have pursuits. So it's a real, um, it's a great, I mean, it's long, so it's not the most maneuver, maneuverable in moving water, I would think, because you don't want to get it sideways a lot, but for paddling speed, it's it's a really fun kayak. I was able to put yeah. my kid on the front, so it was it was pretty. I mean, it's pretty stable. I'm not saying it it's not stable at all, but it's. I would say it's middle middle of the road at best. Okay, PA Hobie, your your Hobie fourteen, way more yeah. stable. I would say I would say like if I pursue <coughs> a six, my Hobie is an eight. You know. And then the autopilot's like a 10. <laughs> yeah, and, and I used to have it. Well, the I had the Old Town 120 PDL. That was a 10. That was a 10. Like a yeah. nine and a half. You're not you're not flipping that. That Diablo Amigo, you're not flipping that. Um yeah. I had a Titan 12 that you know that was a battleship. Is you're, that a 10 too, or is that more of like an eight or nine? The what? Oh, the Titan? Yeah. Titan was the most stable I've ever had. That was a 10. Oh okay. I would I would say the the Diablo and the the Diablo. I I don't know how you could possibly flip that. So let's say a nine and the also. Yeah, I don't know. It, it would it you know so like I don't think there's a certain. I I see everybody on these boards and they say. Mm-hmm. I'm new to kayak fishing. What's the most stable kayak I can get? And it's not. You learn pretty quick if you really get into it that stability you want, you know, like if the Hobie's an eight, you really don't want anything more than eight because anything past an eight is slow. You're losing speed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're losing the speed. So Yeah, like, you're not getting to your spot. You're not you're just not getting there first. Yeah, there's you know? like there's no cargo capacity in a <clears throat> in a Ferrari, but it's fast as hell. There's Mm-hmm. You know, and you can get a minivan and put a bunch of stuff in it, but it's it's slow. So yeah, you know, you, you can't engineer everything, but if you can get a seven or an eight in every category, that's kind of where you want to go rather than one being ten or one being right. five or whatever. I mean, it, I think yeah. I think those those stable boats like the Titan, the Autopilot, the Diablo, like those are stable boats and those are I think those are okay boats if the lakes are big and you're fishing yeah. offshore. Like if if no one's gonna find your spot and you're fishing against a hundred other kayakers at Kentucky Lake, I think an autopilot is fine and a Diablo and a um, Titan twelve is fine. But if you're fishing a small little pond and there's a hundred kayakers in that small little pond. Well, you better be one of the fast guys. That's what I've learned yeah. from fishing Yakabass is we're hitting up all these smaller lakes and there's like 150, almost 200 kayakers in a small lake. If fish is so small, you have to be fast yeah. because there's going to be, I mean, I'm used to it. I'm a motor guide guy. I'm one of the slower guys. So everybody that has a NK 180 or Torquedo 1103 or 403, they're blowing past by me. No problem. And, and that's the same story as with uh, Autopilot or Titan 12. Everybody's going to be blow, you know, blowing right past us. But um, And I, and two, I, I, let me say this too. Like, yeah. I didn't mean to put down the pursuit. I, I just, I found it to be, like I said, middle of the road, stable. But if I could have 10 kayaks yeah. with that, with a motor, I think that would probably be that or the Kusa X. One of those two would be my like river with a motor boat. Like if I could have four different kayaks, yeah. like I could, you know, like if I could have an old ta- uh, autopilot one, you know, mm-hmm. the big one, and I could just have that, that might be one of my kayaks too, because then I could have rather than one that like my hobby has to be real versatile <laughs> because like mm-hmm. this weekend I fished in a foot of water at one point and I fished in 50 feet of water. So it has to be in Alabama. We have so many different kinds of water that has to be really versatile. Um, but right. If I, if I could have a pursuit with that, I, I mean, that would absolutely fly with a, yeah, with a motor with a Newport on the back, dude. Really? Be, oh yeah. You'd be like seven and a, a half. 
there'd be a wake behind you. I don't know. I mean, it's it's 13 and a half foot long. <laughs> what are you I mean, getting with your Hobie PA right now? Are you five. running that 180, yeah. right? It's a small 180? One, yeah. mm-hmm. You're getting five, and then you're yeah. saying you strap on the same exact mold or on a pursuit, you're getting like five and a half to six? Five and a half? Uh, I think it'd be six. Absolutely six. Probably with more. One and a half, 1.8 horsepower motor. Oh, with yeah. the 1103, I wonder how, how fast that's getting. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it would it would it would fly. I mean, that boat. I could really imagine the Newport with a pursuit, dude. You would be, mm-hmm. you would be one of the fastest guys on the water, no doubt. Well, I think that's why um, Guillermo's running it. Guillermo, yeah, yeah, yeah Guillermo. Yeah. <clears throat> I had my eye on it. I definitely, I actually would probably pick the pursuit over, um, the pursuit over the unlimited. Really. Yeah, because Unlimited, I demoed it. It's a great boat. It's wide. There's, It's customizable. You can do so many things to it. It's a great boat. But the steering on it, um, you have to buy the rudder. Because if uh-huh. you don't, because it's so wide, it doesn't want to point you in the direction that you want to go. So uh-huh. if you spot a fish out on live scope and it's to the right and you turn your boat to the right, It'll go. It'll kind of like drift sideways, but the nose of the boat, the nose of the boat, don't, doesn't actually turn to that direction, uh-huh. unless you install a rudder to help that. Yeah. <clears throat> but the rudder is, um, I think it's five hundred bucks or six hundred bucks just for Whoa. the rudder. So you're, that. so you're buying the new canoe. I think it's like eighteen hundred or something like that, or seventeen. And then you buy the rudder, then it's twenty three hundred or twenty two. And then you're looking at a boat that doesn't have a pedal drive and just a rudder, and you're spending about 23. That's about it's the same thing as buying, um, what is it, like a native Tyne 10 or yeah. a Old Town 106 PDL? They both have rudders and pedal drives. So I decided not to go with Unlimited because the steering is not that great because it's such a wide boat. And that accessory, that rudder accessory that costs five or six hundred dollars more, that's it's just not in my budget, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, <coughs> but it's a I, great boat. <coughs> I don't know, I I would I wouldn't want to put a rudder on the back of the inlet to me because yeah. I, I like to pedal because I would want to be able to have the op, be able to pedal too, you know. So, you would but, probably put the pedal drive in the back, yeah. I mean, I I, I like. I've never had a bow mount, so I'm I'm a pedal guy, pedal motor, or just pedal. So I, the pedal drive, I think it's an extra thousand dollars, I think, yeah. or more for yeah, the new canoe. So you're looking at like twenty eight hundred or three thousand dollars for a pedal drive new canoe, and that's 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 a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the way it's designed, it has the thick gunnels, so even though it's forty one inches. That thick gunnel space, it doesn't allow you to put spread your feet kind of like a PA fourteen or a take two mm. or Jackson Nar because the gunnels are very thin on the PA fourteen and Jackson kayaks, right? So you could really spread out your wings <clears throat> while fishing. With the new canoe, there's there's like this little slot right here that goes like this, and then the gunnels are like this thick. So really your feet can only go this wide. It can't really go that wide, even though it says 41 inches. So, I, I mean, the, the first tip I have for, for people buying their first kayaks is, you know, go demo your friend's kayak. Oh, yeah. Because you you think on paper that, that maybe that kayak fits you or tailors to you the most, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe you yeah. find the little nuances that that's not really tailored to your style. I think, yeah, that is absolutely the best advice. If there's anybody listening to this and you're just thinking about getting into kayak fishing, demo. Mm -hmm. Like, get on a group page. Like, there's probably a shop around you. If there's not, get on the group page for that, probably that specific kayak or like Jackson Kayaks. Or if you're looking at a NAR, go to the NAR group and ask on there. Because there's probably a, if not a dealer, there's a, where somebody a dealer can point you in the right direction there's probably a team guy that's not or Mm -hmm. man or woman not just guy but um 
there's probably a team member not too far from you, so you could demo one of their boats. I mean, that's <coughs> part of what they do. So, because yeah. I've been, a, I bought some kayaks and was like, oh, I shouldn't have bought this because this is not. Oh, for really? Me. Yeah. yeah, I kind of got lucky. You know, my first one was 106 PDL. Great boat. Great yeah. boat. Second one was uh, 120 PDL. Even more stable <laughs> than the 106. Like, I got really lucky. I never had demoed boats, but then when I started demoing boats, yeah. and then once I went through three kayaks, I really kind of knew what I liked. And so demoing even helped re reinforce everything that I liked, you know, and it really helped me kind of go into the right direction. And Jackson, the take two is, I believe, I didn't demo it, but I believe I'm going to fall in love absolutely with that deck space and, and, and customizing a, uh, a bow mount on it and having all that, you know, that room to, to, to stand and to put all my gear in there. I look forward to it. I like it. It'll be a cool guy to see you do it on your YouTube mm -hmm. page because it'll be so, because it is make it your own and you can do anything. Yeah. With it. I, yeah it's, I think it's going to be fun to watch how you set uh, it up, you know, and how it, it's funny. Like I, I like to do on my YouTube page, not mm -hmm. that I put much content on there, but I like to do a video of my setup every mm -hmm. six months or so, because it always changes so much. Oh like yeah. I, yeah, I, I love doing that and going back and looking. Why did I do that? Why, mm -hmm. you know, why did I put that there? That didn't make any sense. And yeah. it's sometimes nice when you just like the littlest changes, putting a fishing graph instead of in front of you off to the right or something like that. So you can have all that room doing those subtle changes really like helps you out kind of fine tuning your game on the water and making things more efficient. Like, for instance, taking a picture of your fish having all that deck space to take a picture of your fish speeds up your day and makes your day so much faster or adding a clamp to the left um, that holds your fishing net out of the way so it doesn't get stuck on let's say a yak attack gopro mount or something like that or yeah. or a cup holder having it out of the way at a certain angle on a on a yak attack clamp for for instance allows you to reach for it it doesn't get snagged and you scoop that fish as soon as possible versus you lay that that net on top of your gopro on top of your cup holder that thing will get snagged it adds two seconds to finding the fish that fish comes off there goes there goes that fish there goes that kicker no one wants to have that story right so <clears throat> each and every single time even the little adjustments really do matter because it'll allow you to bring put fish in the boat faster and more efficiently. That's right. And I, man, that's, I'm not going to say it's not my favorite part of kayak fishing, mm -hmm. but I really enjoy that part. Like the, the rigging it out and the moving it and altering yep. it and like going out and then making this a little bit of change. But this little mm -hmm. change means you got to like change a bunch of other things. Like I had my, my paddle on the outside on these, um, they were H rail. I think they're rail blazers. <coughs> or rail maybe they're Hobie yep. ones. They're mm -hmm. like, um, it's where my paddle goes and they have these little straps that go over the paddle. And yep. then because I had taken it out of the clips in the back, the Hobie clips in the back and I had putting it there. But then I started that way because I've always had my paddle on the outside of the kayak. I've just, you know, every kayak I've had, that's where I put it. But then yep. over time, I realized I really not using that paddle with the, you know, with the Hobie. So I don't need it that much. And whenever I do, I can just grab it there. But I still had it there. But now that I have live scope, I kind of put those together and I'm <laughs> going to put my live scope there. Mm -hmm. So it's like now I put my clip, I put my paddle back in the clips in the back. And but it's it's those little moves like that, like they can make a big difference. And I'm I'm, you know. Not to try to talk up my kayak, but I am so in love with my setup right now. Like, I really feel like I have it the most lined out of any kayak I've ever had. I'm just completely confident with it. I just, I, I couldn't be happier right now. Seriously. I mean, you're winning. I mean, yeah. that's, that proves everything. If you're winning, that means it's pretty dialed in. Yeah. Um, the minute that, you start telling your friends stories about how you lost a fish here, how you broke off a fish there. 
then you might want to go back in the drawing board and kind of build out your kayak a different way or doing do things differently. But you never want to be that one guy that keeps on tell, talking about that lost fish or the big fish that got away. You want to be that guy to just keep on, you know, bringing the results home, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> but it's, it, too, it's like trying to find chaos and you're, you're trying to find, you know, the right way to do something amidst kayak chaos of your kayak because yeah there is, there is no right way like you have all these lines you know like underneath my graph mount i have like bolts coming out i've cut them down as far as i can go mm -hmm. and i've kind of grind them off so they don't hit my you know my line or like yeah. on the bottom of my my seat post i there's rivets on the side of the front seat post that I've electrical taped around because I had line catch it one time, but really? like there's all the, there's all these little things that there's nothing you can, I mean, you've got line and rods and, and all this crap go on your kayak moving yeah. at all times and net and, you know, lures with hooks and <coughs> it's, it's never going, it's chaos no matter what, but you just yeah. have to try to tame the chaos in the best way you can. But, there is no perfect setup and it's sometimes it's just going to be a mess. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you a story right now. There's, there is a Sacramento Delta. I have an hour and a half, two hours to call a 14.25. All I need is a 15 incher to take home the dub. I have 97.5 inches and I just need a 15 inches because the guy, the first place guy had like a quarter of an inch or half an inch ahead of me lead. And I catch a fish and I'm burning a chatterbait on like a 7.2 to one. And I'm just cranking up at like 1.5, two miles an hour on my bow mount. And I'm reeling, reeling, reeling. And I get smacked on the chatterbait jackhammer. And the fish goes darts straight towards my motor. My bow mount clips off. Oh, he no. untangles off and swims away. It, you know, the difference between like a 13 incher and a 16 incher or 15 incher just by looking at them in the water, you know how big they are. You yeah. know what I mean? Like a clear, like 12 to 13, it almost looks unmeasurable inside the water, you know? But a 15 or 16, that for sure was measurable. Things like that, man. You know, just need to be dialed. I think I think that's the biggest thing. I would have fought that fish differently had I had I been a little bit more experienced. Maybe I would have changed the direction of the fish to the left or to the right. But because my motor was going straight at two miles an hour, I should have changed the direction on that. And just because of that little mistake, I I wasn't able to call that fourteen two five. Every other fish was was twenty to twenty two inches on. On, on my wow. board so <clears throat> does anybody run like an actual foot control steering like i've, I've always wondered why nobody is nobody is doing that my buddy has does my he buddy, yeah it's just they don't is it like have... flat or or does he have it up <laughs> it's weird it's low-key kind of dangerous it's on a hobie <laughs> yeah. outback so it's oh wow yeah, it's... he has a bow mount on Outback. <clears throat> yeah, he does. What does this dude weigh like eighty pounds? I think he's probably like one seventy five, one eighty. Oh, okay. I'm about your size. I'm two thirty. Yeah. Uh, last year at the end of the season, I was like two fifty five. I dropped about twenty five pounds. Congrats! But I lost. I lost five. <clears throat> man. I'm, I'm getting there. So I'm. I'm. I'm really trying. I dude, really it's yeah. it's a. Uh, I think the first month is the hardest part of it, but after a month, it's a lifestyle, you know, just yeah. eat. What I recommend is just eat a whole bunch of steak and chicken or what, or pork. You that's, know. that's why I've been doing cutting out the farms and we, <laughs> yep. we've got these like, uh, we got a place here where it's like food prep meals called clean eats and nice. uh, no, not trying to shout them out, but the, but yeah, like eating their meals um, instead of eating out or, mm -hmm. you know, just trying, just trying to make some good choices, trying to, yeah. you know, we, we got a little, 
not a gym, but we have a couple a bike and a elliptical here at the house and nice trying to get on that more and you know, just trying to be active with a kid and I drop five, but I'm I'm really trying to get there. So Well, I mean you you don't look two fifty at all. Well, when I see it, I'm, I'm like I'm like, man, you look you look pretty much the same yeah. size as, as, as me, pretty much. Yeah. Two thirty. Well, I'm a fan uh, <laughs> Me too. Me too. Aren't we all? But yeah. you know, the, the point is that we're going in the right direction. That's that's, that's all right. that matters. I you said know. I asked, I like I went from working outside and then you know, like working in a plant and things like that. And then we yeah. had a kid and it just went up and up and up. And then now it's like gotta get it together. And now it's yeah slowly starting to come back down, you know. It just your life changes and, and your whenever your diet and your your exercise goes down and your diet stays the same. It just, you just can't make up the difference. And then it just adds pounds, <laughs> you know, over time, but there's no excuse. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I need, I mean, it's, 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 it's the same deal. It's like last year I was on the road a lot. Like every month I was traveling on my way to Kentucky. It doesn't help that there's p- potato crispy wedges at every single gas station stop, you know, like you, we live as such potato crispy wedges. What is that? <laughs> Those potato crispy wedges. I forgot what they're called, but they have them at the the gas stations all the time. But they deep fry. They batter the potatoes, and then they deep fry them, so they're okay. extra crispy, like wedges, potato wedges. All right. And I and I would just order them. Damn, like, huh? It's only a dollar for like a big old wedge this big. Like, oh, okay. I'd say like size of a hood like an eight inch hood you know and, right. and every day after practice i just swing by the liquor store or the gas station pick up three of those you know it's just like buy two get one free or something like that but it's that right away, it's that fishing yeah. grind is like when you're when you're fishing full time you start to you start to kind of um pick up the easier choices you know the easier yeah. okay satisfying choices and that's what brought me down that's what brought me up in poundage poundage is um those fast and easy choices that are not the smartest you know but then like you said once you hop onto those like those those meals and you start getting used to them your stomach starts to like getting used to having all that higher protein and you start to feel more satiated throughout the day and you're just like I don't really need to eat that much. Yeah. That's it. Like that, well, <laughs> we, I, I did a show not too long ago where stuff that you eat on the kayak, like food yeah. on the kayak. And I've been, I'll, I'll tell you what, like I really have kind of the best practices of what people were doing there. Shit, and now thinking about it in hindsight, the way you're saying it afterwards, I should have, I should have done a food like, I should have added not just what you eat on the kayak, but what you eat whenever you leave the water. On your yeah. way home, because I make a big mistake, you know, like, like oh, this last weekend is bad. You know, I stopped and had, got a damn Frisco burger from parties. I, y'all have Carl's Jr. out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, we, they call them parties here, but I, that's what I had on my way. You mm-hmm. know, I should I've been eating good. I, I ate good on the kayak with the jerky and, and the water and I froze a Powerade, like, you know, yeah. like one Powerade, but all these things. You know, like things where people were doing on the kayak and they were great trail mix and trying to eat right. And then, boom, Frisco burger on the way back. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. that's that's the easy choice, right? It's not the smartest, but it's convenient and it's easy. But what I like to do now is when I get off the water is let's let's eat Carl's Jr. But let's do the lettuce wrap char broiled California classic over at. Over at Carl's Jr. And they're they're lettuce wrapped, they're lettuce wrapped, bacon wrapped burgers are insanely good. Here, you should try it. Just ask. They don't, them. They don't have that here. <coughs> they don't have that. No. You gotta ask them for the lettuce wrap. Just tell them. Don't Bro, give ain't me nobody buns. doing lettuce wrap in Alabama. Really? No, man. Damn, it must be a California thing. Yeah, it, it <laughs> must, they must be owned by the same people, but they probably have a Carl's Jr. menu and a Hardee's menu. 
Because oh, okay. I promise lettuce wrap is not on the hard. Well, no, menu. it's 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 not on the menu either. Over oh, here. okay. Like it's just it's hmm. an undercover menu. Dominic Gordon ordering off menu at fast food. <laughs> all right. All oh right. heck yeah, man! All day, like every it. single time, lettuce wrap. Or I'll go to McDonald's and I'll say, "Can I have two Big Macs? No buns. Just give me the Big Mac, the Thousand Island, and the lettuce, and I'm good with that because." As long as I get my protein, my fats, I'm good. My stomach will stay happy while on the water and it, and everything. And, you know, a good thing about it is that if you start camping and you save money during camping during these tournaments, pick the right camping partners because that's a big deal. Um, I'm camping with Matthew Brannon, uh, sometimes uh, AJ Ramirez and Pua Yang. A few other guys, cool, Daigo K. That's a, that's a good guy. <clears throat> Those guys are straight up bringing tri tip or um, beef cap or um, some hot dogs with the cheese inside. Those are perfect camping partners or tournament partners because they're putting you on that right path. They're they're cooking the good stuff. You know, all you're eating is steak. You're not eating no rice, no bread, or anything like that. You're eating the good stuff. The stuff that will keep you satiated throughout the tournaments. The only thing I say is to stay away from is the guys that drink a lot. Because about two and a half weeks ago or two weeks ago, Pua brought some Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> and I got in trouble with that. And I didn't make good decisions. I wasn't responsible. And I got sick after day one practice after drinking Jack Daniels with Pua. And the guys, and then I had the chills, and then day two practice, I had to call it short just because I was literally sleeping on my kayak <laughs> from spot to spot. I was literally sleeping, and um, I didn't feel feel well, and I'm still trying to recuperate from that weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but just be responsible, drink responsible, and pick pick the right tournament partners. Because you know they'll put you on some tri tip or beef beef cap or some hot dogs, some good healthy meals, you know. Yeah, I hear you. <coughs> I, I we stayed at house, but uh, this weekend, but everybody I stayed, we we had uh, we went out to a restaurant and ate. Which uh, if you're ever in, if you're ever <laughs> at Smith, if anybody's ever at Smith Lake, uh, oh. Chef Troy's, it's it was pretty good. It's it's like a just hole in the wall place and it's, Chef it's, Troy. Chef Troy, 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 like, Troy, like Louisiana, like he was supposed to be like a Cajun guy. Like he had, I mean, so it, it, some of it was good and what I had was okay, but the, yeah. his gumbo was trash. So don't get the gumbo. <laughs> anything besides the gumbo, everything, everything else looked all right. Don't, don't get that gumbo. Don't get that gumbo, guys. No. <laughs> no. What, it wasn't even you... close. It was too thin. It was like red. It, bro. That, it was not gumbo. Really? I, don't, I don't know what part of Louisiana dude's from, but mm, that that ain't gumbo. <laughs> he, must, he must be like from a border town or something like the, you te- know, was... the, the border of Texas or the border of Arkansas or something. It was it was pretty interesting on my way to Kentucky Lake. I we stopped by this um, <clears throat> restaurant. We went through Texas, I guess, huh? We went through Texas, yeah. New Mexico. Uh, Arizona. Oh, that's, be- that's beautiful. That wait, <coughs> did you go through like Amarillo up there, or did you go? Was that like the northern so. tip where you went through the painted desert and all that in New Mexico? That east, east, north, <coughs> or New Mexico the <coughs> east and uh, New Mexico is really beautiful. I well, I mean, Arizona is very beautiful. Yeah, like Arizona Flagstaff. Yeah. Flagstaff is 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 awesome. Yeah. Um. But Arkansas is interesting. So <laughs> that's a, I'm not trying to, you know, jank on Arkansas because I live in Alabama, but Arkansas wouldn't be my first choice of places to live. Yeah, we stopped by um, a restaurant and it ended up being in like a farm and off the highway, probably like 30 minutes. And uh, it ended up being like, two rvs attached to each other or something but the food was decent you know it wasn't bad 
It was yeah. bad at all. We, we have a place on the Mississippi Golf <laughs> Club. It's, uh, it's called the Shed Barbecue. Mm-hmm. And literally started as a shed. A dude mm-hmm. was selling barbecue out of a shed. And then they just add it on to the shed. So it's like now it's a big giant shed. But it's they had their cool. own, They have yeah. their own TV show. They have their own sauces in the store and all that. I mean, yeah. it's like a real sweet Mississippi barbecue sauce. Like, you know, everybody, Carolina's is vinegar, Memphis, you know, Nashville hot. Mississippi is like sweet barbecue. It's, it's, it's good. But yeah, that place is, it's, it's. Hey, they have like blues music. It's, it's a it's a cool vibe, but yeah. it's uh yeah. It's, how's Alabama? Is it how's the city life there? Is it I live it, yeah. I live in Hoover. Like I'm um uh we actually went up today, an hour and a half away. We went up to Huntsville mm-hmm. to the it's the NASA, the US Space and Rocket Center, mm-hmm. where they have like moon rocks and the landers and all kind of cool stuff. But Huntsville was just rated right the number one place to live in the country. Like, oh, nice. Hunts, yeah, Huntsville is a couple hours from Nashville. It's absolutely blowing up all the Tennessee River. Like, Wait, Nashville, Tennessee? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, how close are you from Nashville, Tennessee? I think I'm three and a half. <coughs> oh, that's not too bad well, at all. Three, three and a half, something like that. Yeah. Is that a nice far. place to live? Nashville? Nashville? Uh, yeah, it's blowing up. It's, oh, it's really? like doubled in size in the last 10 years, you know. How's the prices compared to California? Still yeah, down. much cheaper, man. <laughs> yeah, but I, like I don't understand why you're there, dude. Uh, I don't understand why I'm here. Oh, well, I do understand. It's my girlfriend. She loves California. She loves the weather here. And uh, until I make it in the industry, you know, then I'll start. Then I'll move over there. But she's like, she's kind of like, if I don't have to work or if I could. <laughs> pick up some part-time job and you can be responsible of the income, then we can move out there and give it a shot. So <clears throat> she brought up Nashville recently because she follows like an influencer on TikTok or, or YouTube in that area. Um, and, and I was like, sure. I mean, my first ideal place to move is West Texas around that area. <laughs> but, oh, no. I don't know. I lived no? in Abilene, man. Don't, I'm again. No. I'm not throwing shade on, on Texas. Texas. No, like East Texas. If you could yeah. be like, you know, I just want it next to be like the double digits, so I could put more double digits in my content. You know, Texas. I, I really, <laughs> Tennessee is. You know the Chad. I really think like Huntsville, Chattanooga. If you're a fisherman is the best place to live in the country because like it look at Huntsville or Coleman, just uh, let's say Huntsville, you have two of the best clubs in the country. You've got North Alabama kayak anglers. Their events are usually 80 to a hundred people. And you have uh, Steve Owens events, uh, TBKA, him and um, Ryan Lambert. <laughs> they help run. They, Steve and, Owens and, meaning Bassmaster. Yeah. They oh. run TBKA. And then you have, because you're right there on the North Alabama, uh, Tennessee border, you have all the Tennessee river stuff. Mm. You have, so all different kinds of water you have, you're only an hour, hour and a half from Nashville and they have a whole bass. They have all their own bass events. Tennessee is Alabama. All us down here this year took a big page from the Tennessee clubs because they have something called cast where it's all the clubs in Tennessee um, where they all get together. They all have consolidated rules. All their clubs, angler of the years go for each other. And at the end of the year, they have a two day event called like the King of hammers or something like that, where it's Mm -hmm. all the clubs in state send their best anglers. Well, this year Alabama Mm -hmm. got on same page and none of our we have like four major clubs. None of our events are five. None of our events overlapped. We all work together. We have a state championship at the end of the year. We have had that, but now it's more organized, but nice. Yeah. The fish, but you have like, <coughs> you, you can look like Matt and Jordan Lee. They came from Coleman where on one side, you got Smith. Well, Smith Lake where I fish this weekend. That's deep and clear mm-hmm. spotted bass and yeah. herring. And then on the other side of Coleman, you've got Gunnersville grass, all the North 
Alabama stuff. I mean, really, Alabama, and then you've got Coosa River, Warrior River for spots and largemouth, and it just, yeah. I mean, what is I, the what is the double digit area though of, of uh, the biggest fish? Alabama, Tennessee. Where's the biggest fish over, over there? Gunnersville. Yeah, I mean, you you have a <coughs> Gunnersville, Chickamauga. I mean, both of those oh, are Chick is close by. Yeah, yeah, they they're they're, cool. they're one lake. Was well, Chick? I can't ever remember this, but they're real close to each other. It's either Chickamauga, Chickamauga, and then Chick. And then Gunnersville, or I, it's I, one of I the two know. they connect. Yeah, and with. that's Wilson, Wheeler, yeah. Pickwick, and then Nickajack, or Nickajack's on the other side of Gunnersville. I, I can't ever remember where Nickajack yeah. is because I've never fished there. Yeah. And then Kentucky Lake on the other side of that. So, like a big U almost. But um, yeah, you, you've got so many different river systems. It's and we're we're really blessed. Like Mississippi has almost all creeks. Like there's there's uh, the Res, which is a um, everybody calls it the Res. Like what? So you're saying R- Alabama Ross, Ross, Ross Coronet and <clears throat> that's the only bass like real bass lake in Mississippi. There's small ones, but there's no like Gunnersville, Smith Lake, hmm. Lake Martin, Lay Lake. There's uh, actually the Bassmaster guys are 40 minutes from me this week on Lay Lake on the Coosa River. Oh, nice. But there's almost nothing in Mississippi. And then Alabama, we have all the water. Georgia has a lot of good stuff too. More spots. Like I prefer the fishing. And some Georgia guys will argue, but Georgia has a lot of water. Alabama's good. Tennessee, but you're all right here. You know, you, I'm only two hours from Atlanta three hours from Nashville. So there's just so much going on in this area. It's, it's doing so well right now, especially Nashville, the way it's blown up, but yeah, yeah. yeah great, great place. <clears throat> I, I I really do. I, I love it down here because I'm not originally from here and haven't moved here. I, I really, really like it here. It feels like home. I need to give it a shot. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, like job. I said, I need to find, I need to find <clears throat> a job in the fishing industry. I do do uh, video production in in uh, fishing now, though. Uh, I helped uh, Bass Thumbs do his latest video. I don't know if you checked it out or not, but um, dude, there, no, I haven't. That, dude, there's like <coughs> fifty or more pros live in Gunnersville. Like you can. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, I can get a job that way. Is film one of the elite series anglers, yeah. and then there's some. I, I've heard there's some people <laughs> that are doing like they'll get in a group. Like, uh, like, let's say you have like Bradley Hallman, um, Scott Martin, and a couple other guys that are housemates that all live in one house. Well, they'll, they're, I've heard that guys like Drew Cook and Drew Benton, they're getting together where when it, I think they have a couple other guys that stay in their house, but they're having one camera guy do all four of their stuff. So yeah. They, yeah. So, yeah, like you get on with a group and then you do all their stuff. That, man, that, that'd be, that seems like that'd be, you know, that'd be a ticket, you know, it's just getting my name out there. You know, it's being patient and um, going in the right direction. You know, um, Scott Martin was just, <coughs> like Oh really? Unfortunately, it's, you'd have to live down Okeechobee. Oh yeah. It's not double digit bass. I mean, you want to catch some big fish. You could, you could live. I mean, you could definitely be his cameraman and it'd be awesome to oh. do, but, uh, yeah, you have to live at Yeehaw Junction. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, w- I wouldn't want to live in Okeechobee. Like, it's yeah. the town <laughs> next to it's like the murder capital of Florida. Oh, yeah. Like uh, it's, yeah, it's like just sugarcane fields, bass, and murder down there. Yeah, I don't want to go. Yeah, there. not, not, not I'd rather, really. I'd rather be in Nashville or something like that. Or, yeah. Nashville's <clears throat> Huntsville yeah. or something, like you said. Yeah. Um, but Lots yeah, that's. Dogs. I'm just waiting for like that opportunity to come by, you know. Seize it, on... take it. Yeah, I'm or trying. get you a new girlfriend, one of the two. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <clears throat> I mean, she has no problem with it as long as she don't have to work, you know. Or she could do one or two days at a retail store or something like that. Come on, yeah, no issues. Gotta work. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, she does have to work. 
you know, that's why we live here. <laughs> yeah. But I don't, I don't, I don't enjoy it. Like besides the the family I've had in kayak fishing in California, it's nice. I the guys, the guys are nice here and uh, super friendly, super supportive. But I'd say like I definitely want to try it out. Definitely want to move out there and give it a shot. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but it's okay. California is okay right now. I'm still sticking 20, 20 inches and and etc. So that's right. <clears throat> yeah. But I mean, in between, you know, living in Chattanooga or Huntsville, this you know, in between Gunnersville and the guys on Chickamauga, I mean, there's so many pros. You you could definitely do a lot of work with them for sure. Yeah, let me know. Let me know if anybody's looking. Yeah, I will. And uh, maybe I'll give it a shot. Maybe I'll fly out there, live out there, pay rent for like a month or two, work, see if I like it. And then if I eventually do and, and there's an opportunity that comes by, I'll let my girlfriend know. i just be like, hey, let's just rent an apartment out there. Let's live out there for a year, see how it turns out. And if things turn out really well, maybe buy a house over there or something. Houses are cheaper. Yeah, how, I'm, like where where you live? How much is a house? <clears throat> I'm just curious. Where I live, where like do you right live? down right down the street? It's like a million dollars, you know, for a house. One point three. Well, I live in K Town. What's that? K Town Mid City. It's 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 really close to downtown LA. Oh, okay. Los Angeles downtown. Um, and my rent right now. We live in a two bedroom. Two bedroom, two bath, and we're paying two thousand dollars or twenty one hundred. Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Your mortgage is like half my rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we, you know, I'll say in Hoover, you know, house and house prices have went up so much. <clears throat> you know, it's it's crazy everywhere. But I mean here. Like just the city I live in, and I'm more I'm in the city, which is it's it's a suburb of Birmingham, but like, you know, houses in my city go between three and four hundred thousand right now. Yeah, for um, but that's like, oh, nice house <laughs> in a great neighborhood, like the yeah. best schools in the state. Like you could live, you know, I I, I could live in the town next to me five minutes away and. It's two fifty, you know. Oh, is it okay? It's a decent neighborhood. Oh yeah, like really, that's a good neighborhood too, and that's two fifty. One hundred percent. You could find a wow. two hundred fifty thousand dollar <laughs> three bedroom, two bath. What does the mortgage look like on two fifty? Two fifty um, or three hundred, like a thousand bucks. My wife pays the bills. I don't know. Twelve hundred. <laughs> I think. Damn. Yeah, I think twelve hundred. I'll say it. Well, we we I mean we bought our house and it was two eighty whenever we bought it, and now it's worth like four hundred. But it, yeah, I I think it's twelve hundred a month. But I mean, interest rates yeah. have went up too. So, <clears throat> yeah, let, let's say fourteen hundred a month. You could have, or fi, let's say at most fifteen hundred a month. <clears throat> you could have yeah. a house in you know top ten school district in the state. And, a, and I'm 45 minutes from five different lakes. Yeah. That sounds like the deal. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why anybody lives in California. <laughs> Look, I'm, I love California. The weather's great. Like, I have an aunt and uncle that live there in San Francisco. We went, and that was the best, best weather ever. Yosemite is amazing. The whole state's amazing. It's naturally amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> Brother, I would not live there. I'd be, it's, it's, I'd it's, be more of a, it's more of like a tour tour yeah area. you can go back yeah. man they say hey delta's got flights all the time you can fly out there and see everybody <laughs> hey, you can facetime people you can youtube yosemite national park you yeah you don't have to be there it's, it'll be all right <laughs> you can live somewhere else trust me there's nothing i'm holding on to over here yeah. you know mm. nothing yeah i don't know 
Let's talk about fishing. So yeah, sorry. All right, <laughs> man, that's it, dude. I'll have you on. We've been on more an hour. Yeah, I'll have you on another time because we were going to talk about a bunch of other stuff too. But yeah, next time talk we'll talk. Things. We'll talk more about your setup on your kayak, how that's going. And we got to uh, talk we'll... about your wins too. So I'll bring you on my podcast. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll continue this conversation about setting up the take two on yours, and yeah, we'll we'll do that, man. Yeah, yeah. So. Send me a time that you're available next week. Okay. For for my podcast. I don't know. Is this live or is this uh, no re- recorded? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it will come out on Wednesday. Right on. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. But yeah. Well, well, we'll go ahead and stop it here. We appreciate y'all listening. Uh, Dominic, tell everybody where they can find you, man. Uh, just go to my YouTube channel, Double Digit Angler. You type that out, you'll be able to look for me. Um, same thing with Instagram and Facebook. Yep. Cool. Yeah, man, go check out stuff. Great, great channel on YouTube. Uh, definitely one one of the best YouTube kayak fishing channels out there. Like I'm subscribed. I watch it all the time. So, hey, thanks, yeah, uh, th- it. thank yeah, thank y'all. Uh, appreciate you listening, and we'll see y'all again next week. Good luck out there, and be safe. Wear your PFDs. All right, later. Peace. <clears throat>